Greetings in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to declare today this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, I've had uh, quite a few friends that have tested positive, that are East in quarantine and, and um, over the past few days, a lady friend of ours, more colleague of my wife, Badia, has been, she's positive and, and over the past two days, she, she just said that um, she's starting to feel better, uh, she's breathing much easier, and we are busy praying for him, we're trusting for total healing. Um, Ronell, one of my age-old friends, we started primary school together in, in very, very, um, what's it, 79 more or less, and we're still friends today, and she's been through it, and, and thanks be to God, always leads us into triumphal procession. Let's just pray as we go into the word. Father, we thank you, Lord. We magnify your name. We want to glorify your name because you are king and there's none like you. Father, we, we come before you knowing that, that we are vulnerable, Father. We are fallible. We are people, Father, that is, that is open to, to so much things, Father. But thank you for guiding us, protecting us, keeping us into, in the hollow of your hand, O oh God. And even as we come to your word this morning, I pray that you will bless us indeed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, let me just say from the outskirts, this does not mean when, when we've lost a loved one that God is not in control. It does not mean that when, when things is not going right, that God is not there. And this morning, I would like to draw your attention to Psalm 27. And, and it's an age-old psalm, and I would just like to expound on some of these verses as we look at God who is in the midst of our struggles that is there with us. Jeremiah or Joshua says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God makes his promise unto Joshua and we claim it unto ourselves even today. And the Bible says, as I was with Moses, so I shall be with you. And we can take that to the bank knowing that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Psalm 27, a psalm of David, the Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked come, came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumble and they fell. Though an army may encamp around me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise up against me, even in this, I will be confident. And I want to just read that first three verses as we, as we go into the psalm. I want to say that bad things do happen to God's people. It is, it is, it is, it's not even a secret. It's not something that we need to hide. We know that bad things happen to good people. In fact, beloved, bad things happen to all mankind. And when we look at, when we look at the first few verses, we see in verse 1, David comes and he makes this very strong declaration, these bold statements. The Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He comes and he firstly declares that God is the light of his salvation. Now, here saying that God is my light. It's, a, it's, a, it's the first time in the Old Testament at least where, where it speaks directly of God being the light. God being the light of His salvation. I want to say that, that when we look at light, it talks about transparency, it talks about um, vision, it talks about what we can see. And there's nothing about God's salvation that is hidden and, 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 and mysterious to us. We know that God is the God who brings about our salvation. He goes on and he says, whom shall I fear? Because this is not the lack of, of things happening around him. This is the confidence in the God whom he serve. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then when we, then we see the same things. In verse 2, but verse 2 and 3 comes and it now holds it up against the enemy. And he says, 
when the wicked come up against me to eat my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they shall stumble and they will fall. Though an army rise up against me, my heart shall not fear. The war rises up against me. In this, I will be confident. Where does this confidence come from? Where does this, this, this strength come from? It comes out of verse 1. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid, beloved? But in the midst of it all, David have this confidence in God. In the midst of wicked, come up, wicked men come up against me. The, um, yeah, wicked men comes up against me. The army may encamp around me. War may, may rise against me. In the midst of it all, David's confidence is in the Lord. Romans 8 verse 31 says, What then shall we say about all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Beloved, in the time of COVID, I want to make this bold statement. If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, something that I notice, and I might be wrong, but it seems as if the boldness of the preaching of the gospel is busy simmering down because we see how men of God are busy dying. It seems as if the boldness... In, in confidence in God and in God's word is simmering down from, from some of the ministers of the gospel because we see how men and children of God are even touched and, and, and killed by this virus. But I want to make this statement, and I've said it in previous uh, sermons recently, like a Shadrach, Meshach, and a Bednico standing in front of Nebuchadnezzar who says that, we will not bow before your gods. We will not bow before the God of COVID. But even if our God does not come to our rescue, still we will not bow. And I want to I wanna make this bold declaration. Now is not the time to fizzle out. Now is not the time to stand back. Now is the time, like, like Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine for your light has come. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We need to arise and have this confidence in our God. That the, when the, even though enemies may come up against us. Even though disease come up against us. Even though war uh, rises up against us. I will be confident, not in my own doing, not in where I am and what I've achieved in life. My confidence is in the Lord. I like the psalm that says, my help, my help comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We see the answer to David's confidence in verse 4 and the following verses, one thing I've desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon the rock. Hallelujah. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. David knew that his rescue, his confidence is not only found in the Lord, but it is found in the presence of the Lord. He says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, and this I will always seek, and that is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. We know that that, that the temple was the place of God's presence. The temple and even, even the, 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 the tent of gathering, the, the, the tabernacle was the place of God's presence. And just yesterday, yesterday while I was ministering at the funeral, one of, one of uh, the brothers was telling me, hey, Pastor, if you preach too long, we're going to pull you out by the rope. And I say, hey, I need to be a dead preacher. To, to be pulled from the altar like like or from the holies of holies like they did in the past when priests were not holy and 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 
and, and worthy of being in the presence of the Lord. I want to say here this morning that we need to know that if you want to stand strong, you need to spend time in the presence of the Lord. If you want to have confidence in the midst of COVID-19, you need to spend time in the presence of the Lord. If you want to stand strong in the midst of your financial difficulty, you need to spend time in the presence of the Lord. The psalm writer says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me, he shall set me high upon the rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Now notice this. He firstly says that, that God will hide me. This hiding is not taking away from trouble. This hiding is in the midst of my trouble. I will be secure. I want to say that you can be a child of God living on or finding yourself on, on, on oxygen, on, on, on a ventilator in a hospital. And it looks as if the enemy have overpowered you. It looks as if the enemy has gotten the bit of you. But I want to say to you that when you are in the presence of the Lord, even in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your poverty, in the midst of your sickness, in the midst of, of joblessness, in the midst of wherever you may find yourself you can say he hides me in the pavilion in his pavilion though now my enemies encamp against me though my enemies is all around me there I will offer sacrifice of joy to his tabernacle in his tabernacle David is saying these things he's making these bold statements in the presence of his enemy, no wonder he comes in Psalm 23 when he says he prepared the table before my enemies. He make me to feast even when it looks as if I need to, to scratch the dust. Even if it looks as if I must be down and out. He prepares a, 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 a table in front of my enemies. I will feast in the midst of my enemies. I will have a victorious meal in the midst of my enemies. I will live in confidence in the midst of my trials and tribulations. And that's not because who I am. But again it is found in verse 1. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. Verse 7 to 14 somehow creates a sense that this bold David all of a sudden sounds differently in the next few verses. And let uh, just, just stay, bear with me and just read with me as I go through it. You, O oh God, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me, nor forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in smooth paths. And I want to come back to verse 11. And teach me smooth path, your smooth, a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of, of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen up against me and such as breath. And such as bred out of my violence, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want to come and visit that verse just now. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait and I say on the Lord. Beloved, when we look at these verses, some people say, 
that it seems as if David is bipolar because the one moment he is he's bragging about who God is, he's bragging about God's uh, um, being victorious in his life, that he stands on solid ground, he's been hidden in the pavilion, he says that God, if God is for us, who can be against us basically? And then he comes and he says, Lord, don't hide your face from me. Lord, be there for me. Do not be angry with your servant. And I realize when we come to verse 4, where it says, And one thing I've desired of the Lord, and this I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold his beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Beloved, I want to say to you that when we come into the presence of a holy God, we realize our brokenness. We realize that we are not neatly put together. We realize that there are cracks in our walls. There is the sin factor in our lives and it gets exposed in the illuminating light of God's glory. The light of our salvation. And then we become not bipolar, but we become vulnerable. So Lord, without you I'm nothing. Lord, please don't hand me over to my enemies. Let them not rejoice over me. Lord, I ask you to please come to my rescue. Lord, don't let me stand in shame of those who are my onlookers. Those who are seeking for my, for my destruction. There's no bipolar there. That is the intimate vulnerability of a child of God towards his heavenly father. And then he comes in verse 11 and he says, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in the smooth path because of my enemies. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in the smooth path because of my enemies. It needs to be the outcry of our hearts. Teach me your ways, O Lord. See, knowing God's ways, being taught and being counseled of God's ways, we see few things happening. Firstly, it is, it is, it is, it is so that we can stand victorious against our enemies. We stand and we, and we stand in victory before the Lord. Now I want to encourage you here today that as we stand before the Lord, not only against our enemies from without, but when we ask God to teach us his ways, I want to say that God comes and he, he protects us and he shows us smooth parts even against the enemy that is within. Because sometimes it is our own desires, our own yearning after things that is not of God that becomes an enemy to self. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Comes in verse 13. And he says, do not, do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me and such as breath out of violence. I would have lost heart. Unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, we are living, and I must be honest, I live like somebody who can die at any time. Often when I say, you know, one day when I pass, and people would tell me, don't speak these things over you. Well, the Bible is very clear. There's a time to live and a time to die. I need to make sure that I have this confidence, that I have this blessed assurance that is only found in Jesus Christ, that if I live, I live for the Lord, and if I die, I die for Him. And Paul comes and he says that for me to love is Christ and to die is gain. And when I can say that, I have to fear no evil, I have to fear no death, I have to fear nothing, because if God is for us, Romans 8 verse 31, who can be against us? Verse 13 says, unless I had believed that I would see, I would have lost heart, unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
I wanna, I wanna declare this over your life, my brother, my sister, my friend. I wanna declare it over your life that you will experience God's goodness in the land of the living. We are living in a suddenly season. The one moment we are here and the next moment things are just happening exponentially. I want to say that when we hold on to God, we're living in a suddenly season. We will experience the, the, the working of God in speeds and in time frames that is not known to us. We will not see the chronos, the, the normal time. We will not see the chronos time at play anymore, but we will experience the kairos moments. And I will minister on these again, but we will experience the kairos moments, how God comes despite of time, despite of effort, but despite of energies being put in and boom, God comes in the midst of it all and he comes to our rescue. He come and he provides, he come and he blesses, he comes and he speaks and he changes lives around. Just like that. And suddenly, we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. David, this David comes and as he shares the Psalms with us, the Psalm especially with us, he encourages us. Even in COVID-19, that seems to be a bugger. Even in COVID-19, where we have seen so many of our beloveds losing their lives and getting sick and people are getting despondent and people and even ministers of the gospel, they are losing heart not to make bold statements, not declare the oneness of the Lord. I want to say, even now is the time to do so. Again, Isaiah 60, arise and shine for your light has come. Who is the light of glory? The Lord God mighty and strong in battle. Arise and shine for your light has come. In the midst of darkness that have covered the earth, in the midst of thick darkness that have covered the people of the earth, it is time for light bearers, for torch bearers, people who carries the word of the Lord into this world to stand up and in boldness declare the goodness of the Lord. God has not been caught by surprise by COVID-19. He's still the same God with the same glory. He is able to do exceedingly measurably more than what we could ever hope or imagine because he is God and he is God alone. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you here this morning and I want to say to you, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Hallelujah. My favorite song. You probably heard me say this many a times, but it still holds true. Look full into his wonderful face. Then the things of this world, COVID, the things of this world, poverty, the things of this world, strife and war, will grow strangely dim. In other words, they are there, but the effect on it on our lives will be dimmed, will be diluted. Why? Of course, it will be because of His glory and His grace. Let us say, like, like David said, let us say like David said, the Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I want to pray. And I want to ask that if you in need of prayer, pray with me for this, that God will give boldness and that God will advance you beyond being crippled and with your back against the wall, because of you. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that we can know that you are God and that there is none like you. Father, I pray and I declare your awesome wonders. I declare your majesty. And Father, any person that is hearing my voice, Father, and who's living in fear, I declare over their lives a freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare over their lives, Father, victory from fear and, and stagnation in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that your children will be delivered and set friend that they will live in the freedom to which God has called them to you have called them to oh God come and bless us bless this day bless this week in Jesus mighty name and all God's people say amen may you be blessed my brother my sister